Oh. Hey everybody, Professor Klein back here in the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University and I'm bringing you a demo on the abdominal blood vessels all the way from the diaphragm down to the pelvis and I'm using the whiteboard because this is one of the best ways to see these. Let's begin. All right. First up, what am I talking about when I'm talking about the abdominal cavity? This is what I'm talking about right here. Diaphragm down to the pelvic region and the pelvis. And really it's got a lot of your internal organs. So something like your liver. Your liver is right here in your body, right side, the gallbladder underneath it. That's in the abdominal cavity. You've also got your stomach. Stomach's over here, the esophagus would be coming down, the diaphragm would be right about here, stomach's in there. Where does this go to though? Well then we're going to the small intestine. And you've got the small intestine, we got the pancreas, the spleen is in the abdominal cavity, small intestine, and don't forget about the large intestine right here, right about here on the body. This is the large intestine. So we got a lot of stuff in the abdominal cavity. What does that mean? That means we've got a lot of blood vessels, different arteries and veins that go to this area. And there's two main ways of thinking about the blood vessels that go here. I actually have drawn on the board the major blood vessels that go to uh, these organs. And you could think about it as coming down from the heart to the abdominal aorta and then spreading out and oxygenating or supplying oxygen to the stomach or to the liver, spleen, kidneys, small intestine, large intestine, supplying that. Or you could think about this other one over here, the veins, which would take the deoxygenated blood from these organs and take it back to the heart. But with the veins, oftentimes you have to travel through the liver. So let's say you were in the duodenum and I have a video up on the biliary system. If you wanna see the biliary system, here's the video for that. And in the biliary system video, we learned that bile travels from the liver down to the duodenum and chops up fats and that's where you absorb those things. So you have some food in that area, but how does that food, let's say carbohydrates, how does that get from the small intestine all the way up to the liver? Well, it's these blood vessels right here. So blood vessels are very, very important. I'm gonna switch it back to the arteries and start talking through the arteries for you. Number one, underneath the, ab, or underneath the diaphragm is the abdominal aorta. So this right here, this big structure in the middle, coming down is the abdominal aorta. And it's gonna split many, many different times as it comes down. And the first split is actually a three-way split. And it splits in something that's called the celiac trunk. The celiac trunk has three branches. The first is the splenic artery. The splenic artery is traveling over to the spleen. Want to see that on a model? Here is the splenic artery traveling over to the spleen. And if I, fl I flip it on up here for you, flip it around, this would be the celiac trunk with that splenic artery branching off of it. You'll see a smaller structure here. And this smaller structure is the left gastric artery. Left gastric artery. That's going to the stomach. There's a right gastric and in fact, there's probably 15, 20 more arteries in this area. But I'm just doing the ones that are on the board right now in this video. Comment if you want another video on all of them and I'll do a separate video very inclusive of all the arteries. But 
the third thing that branches off the celiac trunk is the common hepatic artery. Common hepatic artery is going up to the liver and supplying the liver with oxygenated blood. Great. We hit the spleen, we hit the stomach, we hit the liver. Now let's hit the intestines. And with the intestines, I'm coming down here. We hop to the other side there. I'm coming down here to the superior mesenteric artery. What the heck is mesentery, like mesenteric? Well, popping up on the screen right now is what mesentery is. Here it is. And you can see a lot of fat, connective tissue, peritoneum layers, and blood vessels going through it. So this artery, although it branches off the abdominal aorta, it will go to all of these structures listed out here. Now I couldn't draw these because it would cover everything, but we got the duodenum, we got the jejunum, the ilium, the ascending colon, cecum and ascending colon, and the first two thirds of the transverse colon. First two thirds. That's a very important cutoff from the superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery. Inferior mesenteric artery, what is superior inferior? Well, superior, it's above the kidneys. Inferior branches below. Inferior mesenteric is going to the last one third of the colon, the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and the rectum. So, if I got the large intestine here, and I were to say, all right, this part is the cecum ascending transverse. Right about here is the split between superior mesenteric and this part would be the inferior mesenteric of the large intestine. Bunch of pictures popping up on your screen here to show you these. So the whiteboard's great, pictures are great, your textbook's great. Use a variety of things to fully learn the anatomy but all right we're back here and the only other things to mention are there are renal arteries one going to each kidney got the kidneys down in here right renal arteries and deep down here we do split into the legs and we have the common iliac artery splitting into the internal iliac and the external iliac on either side, but that's really going into the legs, so that's beyond the abdominal cavity. That's the arteries. Pause the video, go back, take a look if you need more time on that, but I'm here to jump into the veins. Now a common classic, super classic anatomy question that you gotta answer is how do you get from an artery to a vein if they're right next to each other. Take a minute, think about that. How do you get from an artery to a vein if they're right next to each other? The answer is you go artery, arterial, capillary, venule, then the corresponding vein. For example, if you're coming off that superior mesenteric, you also have a superior mesenteric vein right in that same mesentery. Here's a picture of the superior mesenteric vein coming off of that thick area in the middle, draining all the same areas. You also have an inferior mesenteric vein draining all the same areas as the artery supply, right? It's like driving a car. You got one road that takes you in and the other side of that road going the other direction takes you out. That's the artery and the vein for any of these structures in the abdominal cavity. The splenic vein, opposite of the splenic artery. Renal vein, coming off the kidneys. I got another video talking about kidney blood flow. Check out that video if you wanna know more about what's going on in the kidneys specifically. But here is where it gets crazy. Hang with me because only the kidneys take blood in directly into the inferior vena cava. Only.
the kidneys. And that's because that blood's already been filtered and it's good blood. So it can go straight up to the heart. But things that are coming from the small intestine, the large intestine, the spleen, the stomach, what do we have in those areas? We have food that just was digested, alcohol, drugs, we've got vitamins, we've got minerals, we've got all sorts of things that need to be filtered before that blood can go back to the heart. So that food, drugs, alcohol, it hops into these veins from the digestive system and works its way up to one very powerful vein. I love this vein. Any Harry Potter fans out there, comment below your favorite Harry Potter movie. Mine is the fourth one there. And I call this the Harry Potter vein. This is the hepatic portal vein. Hepatic portal vein, HP vein. Harry Potter HP here. I really emphasize the HP because it's the hepatic portal. And this is the vein that feeds into the liver. Here's the liver. Another video on the liver if you want to check out this full model. What I'm focused on is down here, this purple one. This purple one is the hepatic portal vein going into the liver. The red one would be the common hepatic artery which you just saw on the arteries and this other thing is the inferior vena cava which does go up right right behind the liver so got the dotted line there to show you it's kind of going behind the liver but we're really focused on the purple in this case the blue the hepatic portal vein going into the liver now what is happening in the liver here's what's happening and we've actually already seen this on this model, liver lobule model, video on that. And with the liver lobule model, you saw this thing right here. You guys see this one? This is a giant vein and we can see all these different branches of a vein coming through here. And after the hepatic portal vein goes into the liver, it branches like my fingers are branching out here and it goes up into these branches this is one of the branches called the hepatic portal vein branch and anytime you see a purple on the exterior part of the liver lobule that is the hepatic portal branch those will go into those will go into right here. Let me get a probe here. Let me get the magic probe. And I go to the valleys. The valleys are what are called sinusoids. Sinusoids here coming down. Sinusoids are very similar to capillaries in the liver. Blood is moving real slow through the capillaries. In this case, special name, sinusoids. But after the sinusoids, take a look here. After the sinusoids, it drains into this part here. And where my probe is would be what's called the central vein. All these sinusoids drain into the central vein. And you can see a central vein over here. And it's any purple colored dot that's in the middle of a liver lobule, central vein all those central veins will merge together into something called the hepatic vein. Say it again, hepatic vein, not hepatic portal. The hepatic portal vein was the one that took us into the liver. The hepatic vein is the one that takes us out. One word changes everything, especially with the blood vessels. After the hepatic vein comes out, it goes up to the inferior vena cava and then it goes into the heart because it's been filtered, it's good to go, it's good blood after that, and it's ready to go back to the heart. 
and this has been your video on the blood flow not only through the arteries over here but the veins of the abdominal cavity i'm professor klein from ohio university thanks for watching